Cardiovascular Consultants presents its Patient Education Series. Dr. Daniel Fernicola explains the ABCs of preventing heart attack. When plaque forms in an artery and breaks open, the cholesterol causes a chain reaction within the artery to cause a blood clot. This blood clot prevents blood from flowing to the heart muscle. Starved for oxygen, the heart muscle will die. This is a heart attack, or what we call a myocardial infarction. The American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology has five rules for the prevention of heart attack. Only your doctor can tell you which rules specifically apply to you. These rules can be remembered in A, B, C, D, E order. A stands for aspirin. Aspirin works on the blood clotting cells to prevent these clots from forming and can reduce your risk of heart attack by about 25 percent. In patients who have had procedures to open up arteries, oftentimes a second medication is used called Plavix or Clopidogrel. This medication likewise prevents clots from forming. B stands for blood pressure. When the doctor checks your blood pressure, the top number is called the systolic blood pressure. If your systolic blood pressure is greater than 140 three times in a row, you have high blood pressure. The bottom number is called the diastolic pressure. And if it exceeds 93 times in a row, then you could also have high blood pressure. C stands for cholesterol. Cholesterol is very important in damaging the arteries. The American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology have recommendations for lowering cholesterol. Very often, medications called statins are used to lower the bad cholesterol level. For most patients after a heart attack, an LDL, or bad cholesterol level, should be less than 100. In some circumstances, it may need to be less than 70. Your doctor can tell you for sure. Stopping smoking is a powerful way to reduce your risk of heart attack. Patients who continue to smoke after a heart attack have a three times more likely to have a heart attack than those who stop. In Maryland, over-the-counter nicotine replacement therapy is available at your local pharmacy. Sometimes prescription medications are needed. These prescription medications are called Zyban or Chantix. Your doctor can tell you specifically which one of those would be best for you. It is very important to stop smoking after a heart attack. D stands for diet. The American Heart Association recommends a low-fat diet after a heart attack to reduce cholesterol and reduce your risk of heart disease. Some patients prefer a low carbohydrate diet, and that's okay. Both diets can be effective at reducing blood pressure, cholesterol, and weight. D also stands for diabetes. Diabetes is such a powerful risk factor for heart attack that some experts call it a coronary risk equivalent. The treatment of diabetes and the recommendations to prevent heart attack in patients with diabetes are the same recommendations for patients who have already had a heart attack. The management of diabetes is more than just lowering your blood sugar. Patients should discuss with their doctor what their morning blood sugar is and should ask their doctor what their hemoglobin a1c is. For good control of diabetes, a hemoglobin A1c 
should be less than 7%. E stands for exercise. The American Heart Association wants all Americans to walk 30 minutes a day. You should think about walking fast enough to break a sweat and walk five days out of the week. For patients after a heart attack or after procedures to open heart arteries, a supervised exercise program called cardiac rehabilitation can be a lifesaver. For more information, please visit our patient education page at www.cvcheartcare.com.